But Snicken might stop 100 games But does anyone care what they have to say? Lit. I know I don't Cause they may doubt, they may scream They may say some things that are plain wrong Dab on it, dab on it But they are dumb, dumb bing-bongs Matthew Juice better <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Murphy. I am Nick Murphy. We are the Brothers Murph here on Dice Tower doing a Top 100. Dang. Dang. Biggest Top 100 since everyone else is more popular on the Dice Tower than us. <laughs> Which is many people. But you know what? It's still popular. Yeah. And we're still going to give our opinions. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so our first segment went pretty well. This is now going to be the second segment. So this is going to be numbers 90 to 81. Yes. The hotness now. This is where the games get good. Yeah, the first 10, those are sad oh, games. Garbage. I'll never play those again. Never. They're dead, dead to me. Do you want to just jump right into it? I think we should jump right into intro it. for this one? No, just a quick reminder that we are independent bodies who think and feel. And oh, from each other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not, I, I'm reminding being... myself more than, yeah. than anyone because yeah, yeah. it's a Rosencrantz Guildenstern situation where I forget who's who sometimes. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but that's also fair. I just want to remember everyone, we're not bought. We're not bought. We're not bought by nobody. Yeah, people keep saying we are. It's ridiculous. I know. Anyway, let's get into... This list with number 90. Oh. 90. Nick, do you know what I love doing? Crosswords. Questing. Almost the same. But you like crosswords. I do love crosswords. Crosswords are very fun. There's yes. several crossword words. And once you get those down, yeah. you're good. Like ape appears all the time. <laughs> it means to mimic. I use that all the time in crosswords. I love that word. Uh, but what I love is questing. But I don't like big quests. Oh, yeah? Not always. It takes a lot of work oh, and stuff. so hard. I want my quest to be brought down into a nice manageable size, or at least it fits in a manageable box. My number 90 is Tiny Epic Quest. Okay, okay. Uh, it's, it's weirdly because I was starting to think, like, it's very small, but it's not. It's kind of a table hog. It's kind of, for what it is, a, yes, it's it large. It packages up nice. Yes. Nice and tight. Uh, yeah, Tiny, Tiny Epic Quest is my number 90, dude. It's so, it's just so fun. <laughs> I'm it's losing, you know, so you ever, like, lose words yes. when you keep trying to plow yeah, through it? You're like, I'm going to get it's there. So, it's so fun. Um, it's really fun, and it's just this cool game where you kind of set out the board, the kingdoms that you're traveling through, and you can fight goblins, and you can go try to learn, like, spells and tomes and things like that, uh, all in the search of getting, like, seven points or something. Yeah. And there's just this cool, you know, I don't know, kind of press your lucky... Yeah, for sure. Element to it that uh, I just quite enjoy. I just think it's really fun. We've played that in Tiny Epic Galaxies. I like both quite a, a lot. And um, I'm just into the item meeples. Yeah. And they've kind of leaned into that. They really more have. More. They really have. But hey, it works for them. So I'm down. And the yeah. games are cheap. They're 20 bucks. Exactly. They're very affordable, to be. fun games that, that package down small, yeah. if nothing else, which is actually important. Like, yeah, hey, save your space. It's a good choice. Good so game. Tiny Epic Quest is my number 90. My number 90 is a game called Pie Town. Pie Town is a hmm. game by Renegade Games, and you are gathering supplies and you're, you're making pies and you're it's a worker placement game it's great and just ah oh, the game crushes man it crushes oh god it just freaking crushes oh crushes like crush soda man i love it so so much it's great man it's it's beautiful and uh it's worker placement you know us with worker placement it's hey. just the best but you're going to the tree to gather different uh so, like berries and apples and stuff to make different Pumpkins. pies and each person has like a secret recipe that only they can do but you can try to like find out other people's recipes it's super cute it's pretty light it's a good kind of like intro-ish worker placement game yeah. but it's just lovely it's wonderful um and i really like it i love pie town a lot and pie town is my number 90 i think all it needs is an expansion yeah you can make it can be orange crush pie boom orange crush oh, come on who's not buying that it's such an accurate orange flavor that's true get it today Yes. But let's go on to 89. 89. All righty, 89. You look like a yin and yang. Yeah, you do. We do. Because you're black with some white and white with some black. Uh. And this segment is sponsored by Feng Shui. <laughs> Get spoopy, y'all. Spoopy? I don't know. <laughs> Odd one. My number 89 is, uh, sorry, I forgot it for a second. My number 89 is a little game, a little two-player game called Hero Realms. Oh. Is oh. Hero Realms. Hero Realms is my number 89. This is a game that, like, I don't quite understand. There's actually a lot of games on this on this particular 10. I don't know why I like it. No, no, it's, I don't, honestly, I'm not sure why we don't play it more than we do, I guess is my way, my uh, thought on it. And I really 
like this game, but it's a two-player little deck builder, and it's a deck builder where it doesn't have that slow part in the beginning where you're, like, building your deck. Yeah. You start off this game, and you are hot beating the crap out of each other. You don't have to do that. Like, a lot of deck builders, because th this game is short, and those games are longer. Yeah. You start off with a very, very basic deck. You have to slowly build up your deck, and then, like, halfway through the game, your deck starts getting dope. This one, right off the bat, you can buy a big card and you yeah. can buy a big card and start walloping on each other yeah because nothing's really that expensive like the most expensive no. thing might be eight i think eight yeah but like you're gonna get powerful stuff so that you feel like you're doing like big moves right yeah away. right about the bat and it's super nice it's it's a great little game it's got great art it's the same game ultimately as like star realms the same thing we like the fantasy theme better we actually have both and we like star realms better i'm not star realms, uh, hero realms better yeah. personally i just like the fantasy aspect better that but ultimately star realms hero, hero realms it's the same game for mm -hmm. the most part but you did get the character pack so now everyone starts off a little bit different there's like clerics and wizards and rogues and stuff yeah. and that adds a little bit more to the game and it just makes it wonderful i love hero realms it's a great little deck builder two players wonderful quick fun um and yeah, I just like it a lot. That's my 89, Hero Realms. Nice. My number 89 is a cooperative game. It's a cooperative kind of puzzle solving game. And it is Rising 5. Oh. Runes of Asteros. 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 Uh, and yeah, it's just a, it's a cool game that uses, uh, by Gray Fox Game, that uses an app to uh, try to basically see if you solve this puzzle correctly. You're trying yeah. to get these constellations, these sort of... Yeah. Uh, you know, signals or whatever into the right spots. And there's like, you know, eight constellations. You're only going to use four of them. Then those four need to be in specific places. And you're going around to, to different locations, fighting little monsters, and hopefully get some little abilities that are going to help you out. But it's just really kind of deduction and trying to, to kind of suss out what information you need and where does it need to go to be useful to you. And it's just, it's really fun. It's really hard. I don't know if yeah. we ever won it. We've never won it, no. Yeah, yeah it's so. tough. And the first time we played it, we lost. And then Gray Fox, we were streaming it on Twitch. Um, and Gray Fox was watching it and they emailed us afterwards. They're like, Hey, you guys played some stuff wrong. And all the stuff we played wrong, like made it harder. And we were like, yeah. dang, this was like the, we were playing like the easy <laughs> version and it's still tough, but I love it. I love that game. It's really yeah. fun. And I just think the, the, the use of the app, uh, is cool. Cause it uses the camera if you want and you can kind of line up and it'll like see what it's what you've got there and tell you if it's right. So it'll tell you, hey, this constellation is part of the puzzle, but it is not in the right place. Yeah. Or these things don't pertain to anything at all. So you can start to deduce, but you, you can only do that action of checking so many times. It takes yeah. a lot of energy and yeah. stuff. So you can't just like check every three seconds. Yeah, yeah, no. uh, so you have to be really strategic about how you kind of use your resources and everything. And it's just a really fun, cool game that I want to play more of. I'm kind of like Hero Realms. Like, oh, we should probably play it more yeah. because it is a really fun, cooperative experience that gets you talking. Yeah, it's it's really great. Really wonderful game. Good choice. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's on my list. Hey, that makes yeah, sense. Because it's a good choice to make good choices. Should we move on to the 88? I think we ought to. 88. Mm. Oh, what do you got there? Dude, it's my new jam. It's my handbag yerba mate. Oh, God, man. I got that mate right here, dude. <sighs> it's so good because it tastes kind of like the earth. But just get your heart racing. Like, like if you just put a bunch of sticks in a cup and then oh, yeah. you decided to drink it. Yeah. But it's got, yeah. You know what, like how that gets you caffeine. fired up? Mm -hmm. Like when you used to be a kid, you play with a stick and you try to whack it on a tree as hard as you yeah, could. Yeah, you're like, mate, mate, yeah, you're yeah. mate. Yerba, 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 Oh, Mate, 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 mate. Handbag yerba, handbag yerba, 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 mate, yerba, yerba, mate. <laughs> My number 88 is another cooperative game. I'm a fan of co-ops, Nick. We are. We're big fans. I'm a fan of, of co-ops when you just have to shut it for a second. Oh. All right. And this one actually really uses the whole... It's not like, just can't share your information for some reason. No, I like this because this game... Dude, I'm just I'm not <laughs> turning this way because it's not salvageable today. I'm not turning that way because my hair is bad. Any big sexy hair. Uh... I like this game because it gets you to hush for a second. Yeah. But it's the mad, it's like, it's it's not just random, like, you just, you're cooperative, but you can't share your information. Yeah. Because it's World War One, and we're in a trench, we don't know how to talk to each other yet, because yeah. we're not in touch with our feelings. Yeah. It's not like that. Not like that. But it's 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 Magic Maze. So oh, Magic Maze. You gotta be okay. silent, because you're, you're going around a mall. And it's just meant to mess with you, basically. Yeah. So you, you're all working together to move these pawns around a mall, and you're trying to steal your, your magical character is teleporting around trying to steal stuff from a magical mall. 
And each person is not assigned a pawn, but rather they're assigned like an action. Like a direction almost, yeah. Yeah, so it's like I can move pawns in a southward direction. You can mm -hmm. move pawns in an eastward direction. <coughs> Excuse me. So so it's, it should be really easy. It's just like, well, we need to go south and east and south and east. But there's four pawns and there's no talking. So it could very well happen where I'm only paying attention to these three pawns. And over here, there's this pawn that needs to go south. Yeah. I'm the only person that can fix this problem. And so people need to start trying to get your attention. There's this one red like pawn you can just kind of tap in front of people saying, hey, hey, I need you to focus. But hey, we can't hey, say on what. Hey. And so you get, there's inevitably points where people are all looking at you like, and I'm just kind of like. And then you start panicking. You start uh, looking around the board trying to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. You know, and you can get to certain time areas where you're also timed. So yeah. time's of the essence. And you can get to these certain areas where you can flip the timer over and allow yourself to speak for a minute. But the longer you talk, the more time ticks yeah. down. So it's just chaos and really fun. Yeah. Uh, and, and it starts off easy, then each kind of level you do adds some other element that just makes it more and more mm -hmm. hard. And it's just super fun, and it'll get you giggling. And you can play up to a lot of people as well, yeah. which is really cool. But it plays all the way down to two people, really yeah. fun. Yeah, it's a good time. I, yeah. I, I like Magic Maze a lot, for sure, yeah, for sure. Good. All right, my number 88 uh, is a Ooh. game uh, that I, I'm almost guaranteeing will be higher up next year because now we play it much, much more often, and that is Wits and Wagers. Uh -huh. Wits and Wagers is a great party game where Mike talked about it last list. Yep. Where uh, you are, it's a trivia game, but a trivia game where you don't really need to know that much about trivia. You just need to be good at betting. Because yeah. essentially, it'll be asked a question of the group, and it's a question with a number, like how many chickens are there in Montana? And then you just have to guess. And sometimes you can make a pretty educated guess. Sometimes you're just straight up swinging in the dark. But then you put it out on a board that's... And you basically have to bet on what answer you think is correct. So you don't have to bet on yourself. Yeah. And you can bet on nobody. You can bet on two different things. And so you can be like, you know what? I believe in myself. I'm going to bet on myself. You're like, you know what? I believe uh, I believe Joan because Joan knows a lot about chickens and she's from Montana. She was a farmer. And so I'm going to bet on her because I feel like she's going to know yeah. more than anyone. Yeah. And it's super fun. You can play this game literally with infinite amount of people. The Dice Tower, they do big Wits and Wagers games at conventions. But we started playing it on stream on Twitch. And we play with the chat and we let the chat bet. We have a system where you can bet in our chat. Yeah. And you can use like this fake currency we call Litcoin. Litcoin. Dang. Um, and so and so everyone at home can bet and actually wager their own fake money. Yeah. And it's super, super fun. And, and I always really liked the game. We're just not really in that kind of party... Just place to play it like yeah. you know and you want to play like two people there's no point no so now that we played on stream though we're playing it a lot of times like once every week or two and yeah. it's, it's it's super super so fun fun and it's just a blast i love the concept uh wits and wages is just such such a great game it's just yeah. such a great game love that game and it's gonna be way higher on my list yeah. for sure because now we're playing year. it again it's great yeah wits and wages man good choice yeah let's get on to 87 you're by my tea 87 what is it Oh, well, it's like video deuces, like a little handheld video game thing. I'm just gonna play it. Why don't you look up an app? There's definitely, there's guaranteed there's an app for that. Oh, dude, I'm not like about all that corporation getting tied down by technology. This is all I need right here. Okay, this is my Blackberry. Okay. Oh. What? It doesn't do anything. It just plays this one game and the graphics suck. Well, uh, they pay this. Yeah. All righty, 87. My 87, I am uh, guaranteeing will also be higher on my list. We, again, we didn't really have a chance to play this very much, but now we have a very good friend um, in Crookie Crookerson who has it, and that game is Raiders of the North Sea. Dang. Raiders of the North Sea uh, is a great worker placement game um, by Renegade? Renegade? Avi? Yeah. By Renegade Game, it's got really great art, but it's this really interesting worker placement game where you get always get to do two actions on your turn. You have a little pawn. Got and a whole house. Oh, cool. Okay. Good, good. You got a little pawn, and you can uh, put your pawn somewhere on the board, one of the spots, and you place your pawn, and you take that action, and then you pick up another pawn from somewhere else on the board, and then you take the action, the one yeah. you picked up. So at the end of your turn, you always are left with one pawn. And the next turn, you play something, do an action, pick something up, do an action, yeah. and there's three different colors of pawns, and they can all go in like different spots. Some are like more powerful than other ones. But it's just super cool, super simple in terms of like that. You're just like, you just go here, do that, you pick up and go do that. So it's a very pretty good like intro kind of worker placement. Yeah. But you're also like raiding villages and you 
have a bunch of different cards that have a bunch of different like raiders on them and stuff and they all do different stuff and it's just a great game i really also love the look of it the art um and there's a whole bunch of expansions for, there's two expansions for this there's a whole bunch of other games that are like set in this universe yeah um but they all have the same art the same look and although i've heard the other games are not quite as good as this one um i still love the look of it and, and i love raiders of the north sea i feel like it's going to be higher because now we're again playing it more because now before we'd always only ever play it if we were like at a convention where they yeah, had it in the library. Yeah, or... so now we get to play it more often, and we just got our friend Crook for his birthday, one of the expansions. So I'm excited to play that. So I'm guessing it'll be. I don't think it's ever gonna like skyrocket, but I think it'll be higher next year. But I still love the game. 87 is uh, Raiders of the North Sea for me. Very nice. Now my uh, number 87 is a worker placement game uh, that we don't play very often, and has honestly kind of been replaced at this point. Um, but it's really fun, and now hearing about certain expansions, uh, I'm kind of interested again. My number 87 is Caverna. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, uh, it's just, it's... Well, it's, this is that high for you. I figured it wasn't even your top 100. I, You know, that's the thing about these lists. Sometimes you get surprised by what's yeah, on it, that's man. True. I, I do like Caverna a lot, yeah. Yeah, I really like it. It's kind of like uh, Super Agricola, right? I but mean, fun, there's, you know? there's, yeah. yeah, but fun. Um, and so in it, you're you're working to try to kind of farm and get animals. You're trying to build out a cave system for your dwarf family to live in and grow into, uh, and getting different just just different various modes to score points and stuff. You kind of want to like tame the land and do all these things, and it's just it's just fun because there's a lot of options. Yeah, say um, the least. You know, and and the way that it kind of unfolds as the game goes along, you get kind of more and more things that you can do so i kind of like that that it yeah. starts you off a little simple and then gradually well, it's, it's nice to teach because you can explain each new section as it come up you exactly. don't have to like do and that's one of these worker placements if they're tough to teach because you usually have to explain everything yeah. or else people won't know what to do yeah you know? you don't know where to begin it's why a hard, finding a good intro worker placement game is so hard yeah and so it's weird because by the end of the game like it's pretty big in terms of all the things you can do but because of that it kind of makes yeah. it a little it's just you do like little bite-sized chunks each time yeah uh yeah and so cabrina like i'm kind of surprised that you know it's this high but now the new expansion oh, where you can be different races and things cool. sounds really and they kind of have their own abilities and maybe goals and stuff like that i'm kind of like oh well yeah i'm like oh maybe now i would need this game because we only play it usually at like places that have it already yeah. we don't own it because like you know frankly feast for odin's a thing and like that replaced caverna for me and, and we own that instead so but now i'm like oh maybe there would be room enough for both if we had that expansion they're different yeah i mean yeah, they're, well, so, they're very different yeah, but, yeah yeah but um yeah anyway caverna's eye number 87 is a game that i've quite liked a few times we played yeah it. definitely yeah, cool replacement can't go wrong yeah it's true. Let's do 86, dog. All right, my number 86 is a game all about studying fine art and trying to become the best artist you can. It is Kanagawa. Ooh. All right, now. It's a game that not enough people talk about. I know. It's really, it's under, it's it's just, it's a tragedy that's not talked about more. Uh, you know what? It's a game that's really cool because you're really trying to learn and, and become the best painter you can. All right, and you, can, you don't just start off great at it. So you have the studio and you have to learn some skills. It's like making an omelet, you got to crack a few eggs first. Yeah, to get yeah, it down. yeah, you got to learn. You got to learn. You know what? But you know what makes learning easier? It's the Clever Cracker and Clever Scrambler combo oh. as seen on TV right there. Now, what you may be thinking is that, you know what? Cracking eggs is not difficult. It's and not. Whisking is surely nothing. It's Less not difficult. slightly fatiguing. Uh, so let's add some difficulty here. I've got this Clever Cracker, and it incorporates two very sharp razor blades in the cracking process. So let's make this thing a death trap. And Nick, you have a uh, Clever Scrambler, which scrambles an egg inside the egg using a fine point needle. It's like, a, it's like a legit needle. Let's see if this thing works real quick. Uh, I cannot stress enough how little we have tested this thing. Not at all. So, Nick, I believe you're supposed to stab an egg onto the end okay. of that. And I'm going to place this in here. Okay, and then I have no idea how much force to use. But let's see if this thing is going to crack an egg real quick. You ready? Well, that did terribly. Okay, and... I'm scrambling an egg right now. It's the needle. Is Look, the egg. The, oh, the separator works. Oh, the separator works. Yolk separators. People, there is a needle inside this egg, and it is a whip whapping up in there, just scrambling the crap this out of that egg. This is such a good gift for kids. It's crazy. I know. Razor blades and needles. And so salmonella. Are doing this. You know how hard it is to whisk eggs. It's not hard at all. 
So what's much easier than using either of these devices is becoming a great artist in Kanagawa. It uses a cool selection yeah, system of, of when to pick your actions. The longer you wait, the better stuff you might get, but someone else might take the column of actions you were hoping to get, and you're trying to build a tableau. It didn't scramble it at all! Oh, what? Look at that! That's garbage! As seen on TV, as seen in our lives. Anyway, Kanagawa is in my number 86, and it's far less disappointing than the egg cracker. Egg cracker. My number 86 is something. I'm oh, sorry. My number 86 is all about what this just did, and that is sinning and lying. Ooh. And this game is Indulgence. Oh, Indulgence yeah. is a game by Restoration Games, and it is a wonderful trick-taking game. It is... It probably is my... It's one of my favorite trick-taking games. I have a love-hate relationship with trick-taking games because we never played trick-taking games as kids. We, we, really, we didn't like, no. play hearts or spades with our grandparents or something like that. So I was introduced to them much, much later in, like, life. Um, the main reason I, I kind of was hesitant towards them is because I'm not good at trick-taking games. I just suck at them. But this is one that I really, really like. And I realized that I like trick-taking games with something else going on. And this is one of those because the trick or the rules of the game change each round. So there's these yeah. things called edicts. And the edict might be don't collect any of the blue suit. Or be the one who collects the most blue suits. Or something like that. Or like don't collect any fours or twos. Or something like that. And so each turn, whoever is the, the ruler? Yeah, the ruler. The ruler gets to choose what the edict is. And then people, when you score points or not score points, you then have to pay them to the ruler, yes. which is super cool. And so it's just an interesting time and it's constantly changing because each time it switches over, you're doing a new round of trick taking. It has a new edict and it's just wonderful. It's great production quality. And it's just a trick taking game that has other stuff going on. I'm really bad at it, um, which is understandable because I'm bad at all trick taking games. But it's it's uh I like it a lot. Uh, it's uh, a wonderful game, um, with, which has got just a sweet sweet ring. And so my number eighty six is Indulgence. I like it quite quite a bit. Um, another game that doesn't get quite played quite enough because you minimum of three, which is a little tough. But it's tougher, but it's great if you can get three or four players to play. Wonderful, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun, and there's just cool little components, including that ring. Yeah. Boom. Let's get an eighty five. Bang. 85. All righty, 80. <laughs> you right? Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm stuffed up, man. Just... Well, you got to get the TheraFlu, man. Yeah, you, you can get tell me about that. Any convenience store, it's so easy. Just snort clear it right up, up there and clear you up. Okay. You can breathe in fine in no time. Get better sleep, too. Okay, well, Thank God. Okay. Well, whew. my number 85 is a game um, that I, I kind of avoided. I guess both of us kind of avoided like getting because it's a very cheap, small game. Because it just... The name made me think that the game sucked. <laughs> and that game is... Hey! That's my fish. Oh. <laughs> this game is very cheap, very small. It's, yeah. it's a game called Hey, That's My Fish. It just... It's... Honestly, it's actually a very accurate name. But it just sounds like some kind of mass market. Like, yeah. don't wake daddy. It sounds like one of those kind of games. So I never gave it even a look. And I think we just bought it blind. Because it was like 15 bucks somewhere. Yeah. And it's relatively small. It's a good travel game. And it's delightful. Yeah, we've played that game in so many airports. It's crazy. Yes, it's it's, a, it's our go-to airport game. Yeah. But it's essentially it's a game where you're laying out all these different tiles, these hexagonal tiles, and they have different amounts of fish on them between one, two, and three. And then each person has these two amazing penguins that are just like, yeah. and like, just real cool, real upset. And you are moving. You have to move in like straight lines, and whatever mm -hmm. you move off of you get to take that fish. So if you move onto a three fish, when you move off that three fish, you get to pick it up. Yeah. So the island, the ice islands where all these fish is, starts to like dissipate. It starts to go yeah. away. And so you can like corner people and trap people or you can trap yourself and be like, oh, this fish is mine. Yeah, and it's then you can just like go islands. And just get all the fish. And it's, really strategic and 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 you can really like box people out and stuff and it's a great honest it's ultimately just a little abstract game yeah but it's a really great game and one that i guess i never gave a shot because the name just sounded mass markety and not good and i wish i tried it earlier because it's just a delightful little game and that is hey that's my fish my fish, it's my fish. it's mine <laughs>
What's your night? My number eight. 85 might include fish stealing. I'm not sure. It depends on what kind of story you get. It's a worker placement game in which you are sometimes above ground and sometimes going below the ground. It is above oh. And below. I'm just saying, sometimes you collect fish and fish. That's true. You do end up getting fish. That's true. Maybe there's a story part where you lose your fish. Uh, It's a cool little game where you get to go down uh, to the depths and essentially have like little encounters that happen. It has this big storybook that have just very short little stories that you tell. And you have to like quest, essentially. So it's just really interesting and fun. And it's uh, by Red Raven Games. It's a Ryan Lockett game uh, that has just really interesting, cute um, art and it's ultimately just a little worker placement game where you're trying to, to get points through getting different types of resources and materials or certain sort of like structures with cards. And it's just really fun to try to do these these cool stories um, that are just like kind of random and stuff in that game. And it's kind of a precursor to Near and Far, which is more kind of uh, thought out and linear, like a campaign Yeah, it's a, it's a cohesive game. story, yeah. It's, it tells a cohesive story and stuff, but I just love Above and Below. I love, like, the storytelling elements. It's yep. fun to get into it and do voices and create, oh, just, yeah, you know, use it. your imagination, and then also have a kind of, like, a fun, light worker placement game. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's just a, my 85. That's all I got to say on this, Above and Below. Just a fun one. Great art. I love Ryan Lockett and his style, so I'm in. Nothing else to say. I love it. That's it. I'm in. I'm in. We want him in. Let's do 84. It's okay with you. You can't get the third flu, bro. You're falling apart. 84. Dude, I don't know where to aim, man. You're aiming here. Like, what are you talking about? I need I need someone in the batter box crown the plate so I know where to throw, you know? What do you want us to do, man? There's only two of us. I know, man. We need someone else. We need a buddy. Oh, gosh. What do we need to do? Bullpen buddy! Steve! Low inside. Stay right. Mike, stop it. Don't antagonize him. Don't antagonize him. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, he's got shark mouth. Oh, he's shark mouth. So my number 84 is all about being bad. Ooh. The more bad you are, the better off you'll be in this Disney hit, Villainous. Oh, Villainous, huh? Yeah, man. It's You know what? It's just, it's fun. Um, It's just getting to play the asymmetric characters. <laughs> he fell asleep in the batter clock. Don't worry. <laughs> he fell asleep. He's so perfect. Yeah, it's honestly, it's just fun being able to play, like, the asymmetric characters. Yeah, it's great. Like, they all, the villains that you get to play, they're, you know, famous characters from all the Disney movies we love, uh, from past and present, and each of them plays totally differently. They have different cards. I'm sorry, guys, I'm looking at it. <laughs> Go ahead. It's very They play different cards. Uh, they all play different. They have different cards. They have different objectives to win, different things they can do, and uh, it's just really kind of fun to explore, and I really love the art in it a lot, because... Each game is kind of like within its own world, but there's also a kind of through line between all of the art so that it all makes sense within the game. And I'm really excited to see this game just kind of get expanded and expanded with more and more villains with different things that they do yep. to keep exploring into the future. Yeah. But what's your A4, dude? I was like, I see his little scream. He's, he's getting more. I know. That's perfect, honestly. It's exactly the joke I was thinking for it. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, my number 84. Uh, is the mind. Ooh. It is the mind. Everyone, it's like everyone was super into the mind and now I feel it's, it's super cool to like hate on the mind. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying that this game is like super, <laughs> super like revolutionary and like that. No, it's just a fun little game and it's like we played it again the other night yep. and it's always fun. I think you can, whether or not the mind is a good game or it's fun is 100% dependent on you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I love the mind so the mind is a game where you have a deck of cards labeled 1 through 100 and you're around a table with your other people it's a cooperative game and you're just trying to put the cards down in numerical order but like Magic Maze you're not allowed to speak so you have to put them down in numerical order just off of like feeling and kind of looking at each other being like I feel like I have the next highest number Mm. and you can't talk but like we kind of break the rule because we do a lot of like 
Yeah. We do a lot of that kind right. of stuff. Or we played recently with this gentleman, and he totally allows talking in the game, but you have to talk in, like, really, really weird metaphors. Being like, okay, so I'm in the grocery store. I'm, like, near the eggs. Like, what are you? Are you, are you near produce or like that? Yeah, and dude, you're I'm like, in the impulse buys before I check out. And it did not make the game any easier, but we were having so much fun, like, thinking of different, like, metaphors. To explain, like, how like... long it's going to be before you can play again. Exactly. Yeah. And it was so much fun. And I'm sorry, like, the, the mind, it's just a fun game. Like, again, it's mm-hmm. nothing, like, people are like, oh, it's amazing. It's great, but it's like, it's just a fun little game that just causes giggling and laughter. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I love it to death. I have no shame about saying it. I love the mind. It's wonderful. I agree, man. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what, it's a great game experience. If everyone says, like, it's not like cutting edge or revolutionary i'm like well but it's always a positive fun experience yeah. i've had it with very different groups of people and it's always been really fun it's always caused laughter and discussion it's caused like feelings and stuff like yeah. there was a group of, of people we played it and we all kind of opened up afterward and had like a really great poignant discussion <laughs> yeah. about like masculinity and femininity in the in in the future and stuff and it's like it's because we played the mind yeah you guys, guys are all like, getting just, you guys are all getting super yeah, in touch man, with the heart you yeah. know uh and so yeah i'm with you dude the mind should absolutely be on everyone's list yeah i think i like it i like it a lot test my 84 the mind 83 before we begin, we just want to say that number 83 is brought to you by Father Ted. We don't understand it, but British people love it. They think it's hilarious. They assure us it's funny. I, They, mu- they must be right. All right. My number 83 is a game that I just looked at. Okay. Is a game that, um, again, like, kind of like um, uh, Hero Realms earlier, talking about, like, I don't get why we don't play this game as much as we do should and Mm -hmm. that game is seven wonders duel oh yeah i really like seven wonders duel a lot it's on my list i really love the game but we just don't play it very much and i'm not entirely sure why but nonetheless i really love the game the game um is is uh of different than seven wonders but kind of have it's in the same ballpark yeah where instead of drafting like you do in seven wonders you have this big pyramid of cards or it's a couple different shapes depending on the round and you are taking cards from there, and then as you start, you start revealing other cards that are behind those cards. So if you have two cards here and one card here, once you take both these cards, then this card gets revealed. And some of the cards are face up, so you know it's coming, some you don't know. And it's just this really highly strategic game of like trying to outmaneuver people by getting your engine going. Like the engine of that airplane. Jesus, are they wow. right above We're our not near airplanes? an airport. We're not far from one, but Jesus. But nonetheless, Despite the airplanes, but there is one airplane we love. Um, but here's the thing: despite all of that, it's a great engine builder game, and it's just really, really wonderful. There's multiple paths to victories, and I love games with multiple paths to victories. You can win three different ways, and it's really, really great. It's just lovely. I love it to death. It's a, a great game, and one we don't play as much as we should, to be completely honest. I feel like for um, a while we played a lot of it, and then we kind of just... We just yeah, we might have burned out a little bit on maybe. it, um, but nonetheless, it's a great game. Uh, Seven Wonders Duel. Love it. Duel. My number 83 is a party version of a game that's already kind of a party game. Uh, it's partier. It's Sushi Go Party. Oh, I think it's way higher on your list. I mean, it probably should be. Wow, well, probably that's I'm, great. Game. Probably I'm a terrible person for it for mm-hmm. saying that. Sushi Go Party is uh, kind of an expanded version of Sushi Go. It has all the components that you love from Sushi Go, and then just many different types of cards to kind of create more variability. Uh, but it's the same kind of drafting game. Yeah. Um, uh, with like the most amazing, cute little sushi art, and depending on the type of sushi that. Uh, the cards that you're using in the game, you might have different goals. So if like example, you might want every two tempura you have, you get five points. Yeah. If you get three sashimi, you get 10 points. But if you only get two or one sashimi, you get zero points. Yeah. Or you can get uh, nigiri, which is just like straight up points and you're not worried about anything. You want to have the most dumplings and all. there's just all sorts of variations. Yeah. Uh, and with Sushi Go Party, it's like you can, there's no end to the combinations you can create. And they also give you lots of kind of like suggested combinations of cards for different types of game experiences that you want. But it's super light and fun. Everyone really enjoys it. It's something that you can teach fairly yeah, easily. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and with that said, no matter how new or old you are to the concept of drafting, at some point it will get messed up and someone will end up with one more card than everyone else. Everyone else has less cards. And it's weird. It's the only thing about it. It's just like, I can't, I've never played a game of Sushi Go where that has not come up at some yeah, point. Right. Someone no didn't mess up the draft. What? Yeah, no, it's so easy. And it's probably me that's messing Drafting up Drafting is the weirdest thing. It's for some reason so hard for people to grasp. Grab a card, put down, pass. That's all it is, but it's just like, again, 
it gets messed up at some point, and like I'm probably very likely the candidate. I don't know. <laughs> It's so hard, apparently. But the studio party is great, though. Party is fantastic yeah. with the cutest, most wonderful little art. Love it. Uh, it's light and fun uh, for everyone. Yeah. That's my number 80 something. Three. Three. 82. Dang. Dang. 82. All righty. 82, Mike. What is your 82, my man? <sighs> Dude, it's getting kind of bright in here. Yeah, you know, we got like studio lights and stuff. I know, but it's like, it's really bright. I'm kind of wearing like crisp or something. Like, you feel like you're burning or something yeah, like that? Yeah, a little bit. You have anything that can help me kind of protect myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, I got this uh, banana boat sport performance here. Yeah, I think we'll I'm this on. We'll be good to go. Sometimes if you're white like us, dude, even inside's too bright. It's too much. It's yeah. too much. Thanks, dude. But this will help us out. Okay, cool. Right. You feel better? You feel protected? Yeah, dude. I feel like I miss any good. spots. Look right here. Right. Yeah, that's good. You're good. Okay. All right, so my number 82 is a game in which you're trying to become unpopular. In this one, you are trying to lose all your money, mm -hmm. lose all your possessions, lose all of your friends and an election all on the same day. This is this low on your list? It's in my top 100 games. Erroneous. <laughs> oh, really? We need to play it more, I think. We need to play it more. It's because you always feel like you don't like this game until you play it. And you're like, I love I this know. game. I know. The game is a prodigal. We all have that, though. You're like, I don't really think I like this game. And then after I play it, you're like, I like this game. The game is a prodigal's club. And I think that's, that's part of it. It's like, I, I, I'll bet you that it should be higher on my list. Yeah. When we were, when we were prepping to do this, I was Honestly, looking at it, I was kind of like, oh. My 82 is very similar, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just, it's one of those games that I do like. I always think that I don't like it as much yeah. as I do. Uh, it's kind of a sequel to Last Will. Or yes. kind of an expansion on that idea where uh, you're yeah, just trying to, like, be the worst. Being the biggest. Which is such a fun theme for oh, a game. Oh, it's the best. You know, and this one, it's really cool because there's just, like, three modules. Again, there's an election you're trying to lose. You're trying to go down in all these social circles, and you're trying to lose all your money and possessions. Yeah. Uh, and you can play with just two of the three or all three if you want. And it's kind of like a worker placement action yeah, worker selection placement, yeah. uh, game that is just, it, it really is a lot to think about. Yeah, like, it's, it's tough. <laughs> you don't think you have to work so hard to be so terrible, but you do. At a lot of CGE, kind of like their heavier Euro games, they're like, they're very fun themes, kind of like Dungeon Pets or something like that, but yeah. they're, they're, they're thinky, man. It hurt. Yeah. They hurt. Hurt the dome. Yeah. Um. But it's just a really fun game that probably if you played more. Uh. We played it recently, and I was like, oh man, I really do like this game. And it is always sort of like I remember that I really like it a lot. Yeah. Um. And I don't know why so far it hasn't stuck in my head that I really like yeah, it's it. Fine. It's just one of those things. But it is a great game, and I'm looking forward to playing it more. So Prodigal's Club is my number eighty-two. My number eighty-two is actually kind of the opposite. This is a game I always think I like more than I do. And obviously, I like it. It's in it's in my eighties, okay. my low eighties. Interesting. Story. That game is Champions of Midgard. I I love Champions of Midgard. Don't get me wrong, I like it a lot. But I always think it's like hater like alert. top fifteen contender, and it's not. As I was doing this list, it kept going down and down and down. And I, I like the game a lot, but it's a really wonderful worker placement game. You're going to see again a lot of worker placement. Worker placement game, but it's dice chucking and stuff. And it's one of those games that like every time I'm playing it, I'm like. I don't really know why I don't like this more than I do, but for some reason, it's just, it's, it's great. Um, it's just not, it's not as high as I think it's going to be, but it's a great game where you're going out fighting monsters and you're, you're going, placing your workers and you're getting like food and you're getting wood, but also what you're getting is you're getting warriors and your warriors are represented by these different dice. There's like spear people and axe people and like bow people. And there's a couple different expansions that are great. And then you use these dice to go fight monsters, but then they die because they're warriors. And it's just a really wonderful game, especially if you have Valhalla and the dark mountains, which yes. are the two expansions, especially Valhalla, Man, it's just great. It, 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 it's a really, really wonderful game that I do uh, like quite a bit. I'm always just surprised that it's not a little higher on my list. But, you know, that's just how it is. That's why I like these lists. You kind of like, I like that game a lot more than I did. You're like, oh, I don't like that game quite as much as I thought I yeah. did. You know, like. But then, like, that's the funny thing is we always think of that and we think like, oh, well, it's not that good a game. It's no, just like, it's well, wonderful. when you played, you know, three, four hundred board games probably in your life. Yeah. It's like. It, it's pretty highly ranked. Yeah, like, it's, it's pretty, a good it's, one. It's great. <laughs> anyway, so I love Champions of Midgard, and that is going to be my number 82. Nice. Let's do 81. Can I get a towel? <laughs> Seriously. Eighty one. All right, number 81. Number 81 for me is a game that I don't entirely know how to pronounce, and that's Kolejka. Kolejka is also known as Q. 
Oh. I was like, what? Kolej Guy is a Polish game, but it's a that game called. Sounds pretty Polish. Yes, it does. Uh, it's a game called Q. Uh, if you if if you're uh, playing it in the American version, and so Q is a game that this gentleman named Marty, who's part of our game group, introduced to us. Um, and it's a game where you are trying. You're in like I think uh, what Great Depression era Poland. Yeah. Like so it's some. Everyone's real poor, <laughs> and um, you're essentially queuing up. You're getting in lines to try to get different. Uh, supplies. There's like yeah, clothes, like there's foods, there's like furniture and like little appliances and stuff like that. And each person has a card that says how much of each thing they need. Like I need three clothes, two food, one this, one this. And Mike might need four canned food, two clothes. Da-da. And so it's all different. And you have these meeples and you're putting them in a line and then you are playing cards and the cards manipulate the line. Like you can take the line and turn it around or you can like move yourself up two spots in line. You can close the shop so it's like no one gets anything. No one gets anything and stuff. And then on top of that, the the resources that go to these different stores around the board are all kind of randomized. So you don't really know what's going to come out but there's a card where you can peek on so you know what's coming out and it's like kind of a really mean game but a mean game where you don't you ever get mad at anybody? It's just kind of like fun and stuff. But it's it's really interesting trying to get... Because like in the line, like if I'm going to get clothes and there's only three clothes cards in there, only the people who are first, second, and third in line get yeah, the clothes because right. that's all the supply they have. And it kind of represents like all these people are trying to get these things and they have like none of it, you know? Yeah. And so you're trying to turn around the line or jump ahead in line or do all this stuff so that you're one of the people who gets some of the supplies that you need. And it's really fun and really, really uh, um a, a kind of trickstery and you're just messing people up and stuff and it's a great time I actually really really in, enjoy it it's really hard to get I don't think it's in print um uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know where you'd go to get this one but our, our friend Marty has it and so we get to play it every once in a while but Kolejka or Q is my number 81 I actually like it quite a bit that's awesome it is a fun game yeah it's fun it times for sure my number 81 is all about spell slinging and controlling different areas and it uses a really interesting um, system for like learning magic um, and there's all these different areas of magic it is Archmage oh okay my number 81 Ooh, brand new got that hotness yeah. on here huh? <laughs> Dot, 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 dotness. Um, and it's it's just interesting. Like, it's just an area control game, ultimately. And you yeah. are kind of going around and discovering the board, uh, finding different wilderness areas that are going to give you relics in various areas of magic. There's things like nature and will and, uh, and death. You can learn death magic and blood magic. Uh, and it's really cool. So if you can get like basically followers that, that you accrue, you can train them in different areas of magic to get access to certain types of spells. Yeah. But then you can have uh, two different people, you know, someone who's good in death magic, someone who's good in blood magic. You can have them duel to get kind of a hybrid spell that yeah. uses death Both, and yeah. blood and you get a uh, more powerful spell, but it's also more expensive essentially to use because everything's based on these relics and it's kind of resource management in that way so it's it's just a really interesting game in, in the way that the different spells work and thematically how they tie to the type of magic it is if it's nature magic um and you're ultimately trying to get control over the different types of areas you know all the nature tiles or all of the matter tiles yeah. and things like that uh and it's just one that i've really enjoyed exploring and i want to continue to explore to see like What's best? Is it better to have a bunch of low-level spells? Is it better to have just a few powerful spells because they cost a lot to use and but you lose more points at the end of the game? Right, and so it's like, and the points are, are precious because you're only gonna end up with like 18, 20 points. It's a low-scoring game. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's just this game that I've really been enjoying uh, exploring. It's really beautiful and vibrant, and the lo- little player boards you have have all these spheres, kind of like the sacred geometry looking thing. There's all these different colors that then kind of make Venn diagrams and overlap, mm-hmm. and so it's just a beautiful, vibrant, yeah, gorgeous, really cool player board um, with interesting area control. And, and I feel like we're just scratching the surface on, yeah. on how best to play. So I want to continue to explore that. Yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, I don't think it's on my list. And I because when we had when we made this list, we hadn't played it enough. Yeah. Now since then, we've played it I think two more times. And now I'm like, oh, it would have been on the list. I sure. really like the game. It's just when we made the list, it, it, we hadn't played it enough for it yep. to make my list. But I really like Archmage a lot. And it's a game where we were talking about it with Crookie because we were playing with our good friend Crookie Brookie. And um, that's a game that's so expandable. Because all you yeah. need to do is just give everyone new spells. Yeah. Like, you don't need to change the board or the way spells work in any way. Just give, like... Here's 18 new spells. Cool. Here's 18 new spells. Cool. Here's 18 new spells. And you can make the game 
infinitely interesting that way. And I, I think it's, I, I love it. I think it's a great game. Yeah. It's just really fun. And uh, yeah, one that I think could use even more exploring. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's my number 81. 81. That is another 10 down, my <laughs> people. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us. If you're enjoying what you're watching, please feel free to go over to our YouTube channel, which is just the Brothers Murph. We put up top 10s and stuff all the time. We do our own videos. Uh, please feel free to check us out on Twitch. Yeah, come watch us live stream and suggest any of the games that you liked and that we were talking about. If you want to see us play them live, go ahead and throw a comment below saying, hey, go play that for us and we'll play it for you. Yeah, indeed. Thank you so much. Um, and I guess we'll see you the next 10, huh? See you in the next 10. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Peace. Here's a little bonus after the video. Fun fact, this is all that's left of my bike that I left here. <laughs> it's one tire. I'm glad they left me that. But here, I got two locks. Both cut in LA fun. Morons, this whole is the ravings of two idiots. I added the song because I'm an idiot. Those John Deere tractors are just idiots.